You're listening to People Are Animals Too, Darn It, with your host, Mandy Evans, Executive Director of Panhandle Animal Shelter. Welcome to this episode of People Are Animals Too, Darn It. Today we're going to talk about fear. Fear is a very comfy place that a good amount of us live in. Um, I'm very familiar with fear. We're, we're quite, uh, um, we're buddies. I have had anxiety problems my entire life where I have tried to take steps to combat it because I don't want fear to, to rule um, my life and my decisions. And when I say that, I'm not saying like, oh yeah, no guys, I have done it. I am awesome. I don't have any problems with it. It is a daily, a daily thing for me to um, not give in to it. So fear, fear is a comfy place that you can hang out in. I look at it as a nice wall. It's a wall where everything that's scary and not in the, the view of uh, uncomfortableness is all on the other side of that wall. So if I stay in my comfortable place, scared to death to leave my house or to drive a long distance, then I'm comfortable, I'm fine, everything's good. But I really miss out on life. I miss out on enjoying things that other people are enjoying because I, um, I don't challenge myself. So in, in the real world, just in daily life, um, what I find is the best way to conquer fear is to acknowledge whether or not the thoughts that your brain is telling you are accurate. Is that going to be a reality? Like for example, with me and driving to the airport, there are people that drive, and this is what I have to tell myself, Mandy, there are people that drive to the airport every single day. There are people that drive to um, nearby cities every single day, and they're okay, and you'll be okay too. And I just have to use logic and remind myself that everything is going to be okay, and I go ahead and I do it. If I gave into it, I'd never do anything because the more that we allow fear to control us, the deeper it gets and the harder it gets for us to get beyond it. The animal welfare realm, we use fear in a different way and none of this is is done intentionally. I think everybody is doing the, the best that they can to help animals, but in some cases, it's actually hurting animals. So some of the programs that shelters will have, and and we used to have them at our shelter, is no black cat adoptions around Halloween. Or if you're going to adopt a pit bull, then we need to do a home check. Or every time you adopt, we're going to verify home ownership, landlord permission, all of those kind of checks and balances to ensure that this animal is protected when it leaves the shelter. But all of those are based in the idea that people are bad and that they have to prove that they're good. With the black cats, there's very little chance that someone's going to come and adopt a black cat from you to use for witchcraft. So what it's doing is it is dooming cats to live in your facility for a month before being adopted. Cats are extremely sensitive and they might get sick Um, Those kittens become adult cats that are harder to adopt out. So it really is not serving the vast majority of cats by having rules like that. Same thing with pit bulls. It's quite interesting that in animal sheltering, most of us think that pit bulls are lovely, wonderful, kind, sweet animals. And that we don't see the perception that the public has and that the news creates around um, around pit bulls. But yet we have more stringent rules when it comes to adopting one, like I'm going to verify that your home is appropriate to house a pit bull. So if we don't want them to be treated as special and different, why are we creating rules to make them special and different? We do it with the best case in mind. We're doing it because we don't want them to be used in dogfight rings and any of the other bad stuff that can happen. But it doesn't serve them. By being more open, not having breed rules, 
and understanding that the majority of people walking through your doors are there with good intentions, you allow these wonderful animals to go into homes and lead beautiful lives. At our shelter, when we, re when we released a lot of our adoption restrictions, when we loosened up and really paid attention to our rules and whether they were based on exception or based on serving the majority, we actually saw an increase in our adoption retention. So our dogs and cats that were being adopted were actually staying in homes longer than they were when we were really more rigid um, on our adoption protocols. So fear, the other part of fear is that fear uh, creates more fear and it allows people to be controlled. If we look at fear, um, fear creates fear, right? So. If you go and you have the news and it tells you that uh, sharks will attack you if you go into the ocean, it is limiting the number of people that actually go into the ocean because they are scared of being attacked by a shark. I am one of those people. <laughs> I will. Um, I, I tell this story. It isn't true. I just want you to know it's not true. But I, my son went to, um, we went to Hawaii and he was five years old, and I wanted him to know that every action has a consequence. There's something, every, and it could be a good consequence or a negative one. And I said, as an example, you can go into the ocean, and the consequence would be being eaten by a shark. <laughs> Just kidding, it didn't happen. So people are scared to go into the ocean and um, because there was a chance they could be eaten by a shark. That's a very, very small chance. Same thing with uh, pit bulls that you see a lot on the news. You don't see a lot about positive things. You don't see all the wonderful things that pit bulls are doing. You don't see that they were considered the nanny dog and that they loved their families and they're very connected with people. All we hear is the negative stuff. Well then, when you're walking your dog and it's a pit bull, the community is actually jumping away from you. So it's creating a mass fear we want to stop that. We want to make sure that we aren't allowing ourselves to be controlled by the perception of fear that other people are putting on us. The other thing that happens is that fear leads to anger. So if people are really angry, they're usually either scared or sad. And so we want to bring people in, we want to bring them closer, and we want to tell them the information that's good and positive and wonderful. Make sure that we're communicating all the wonderful things that we have to offer and not putting fear out there. If we're telling people that you're bad if you surrender to a shelter or you're um, going to be charged high fees if you need to surrender or you need the services of the animal shelter You're putting fear into the community. And what is that going to look like when it comes back at you? Most of the time it'll be through anger making sure that you're open and you're helping that you're a resource for your community and you're not somebody that's creating this in unintentional fear um, that they may not come and receive services from you I think that this applies to everything in, in our lives every day. We see it a lot, um, especially in news. So my advice or going forward is to um, challenge it. If, if you're fearful of doing something, use logic. Like, don't go, I wouldn't, stand on the side of El Capitan Dome in California and say, I'm going to beat my fear, I'm going to go stand on the edge. There are limits that's ridiculous versus logical and just weighing and saying, you know what, today I'm going to challenge this because once you start beating the odds, once you start saying, this worries me and I'm going to challenge it and you do it and it's wonderful, it empowers you to do more. All of a sudden, your whole world opens up to possibilities. Everyone around you seems brighter, happier. Things really do change. Just like all the other podcasts, I welcome your input. I'd love to hear your thoughts, feelings. If any of this resonates with you, if you have good examples of things that have happened in your life or at your animal shelter, um, I would love to hear from you. If you totally disagree, I would love to hear that as well. Um, I just want your input. This isn't about um, me and it's not about us. This is about coming together so that we can all learn and grow together. Thank you for listening.